Uh, hello. So I am going to start doing um, presentations of different themes that have to do with pre-Hispanic art, spirituality, and my own artwork uh, uh, once a week or so on Patreon. So I just wanted to share today uh, my painting in particular that has to do with who he is and uh, what he means. And uh, and also because today is the day of the Santa Cruz, which in I'm, my husband is from El Salvador, and in El Salvador in the pre-Hispanic era today was sacred to Chipototec. So um, so I thought it was uh, special to talk about him today. So about myself a little bit. Um, I think before I start, I am Mexican American. I grew up in LA. My mom's family is from Guadalajara, and my father is white, so I'm mixed race, and um, and I'm a Aztec dancer and practice Mexicayot, the spirituality. So, um, so my work is based on that. I make regalia, I make paintings and artwork, and almost all of my artwork is around an exploration of, of a pre-Hispanic spirituality. So today, which is the day of Chipotec, I thought I would start by sharing some pre-Hispanic images. So this, for example, is a, uh, a painting of Chipe, which um, comes from the Codex Borbonicus, uh, which is either just before or just after the conquest. No one is really sure. So Chipe Totec means the flayed lord. Uh, and as you can see, he wears a human skin. So there's a, a hand hanging right here. Uh, and uh, you can see his red skin, like the, the skin color, uh, Native American skin color underneath. And then this golden skin on top, which is the skin that he's wearing. He also wears a human skin mask, which in this image, which comes from the Codex Borgia, you can see it more clearly. The, the mouth is hanging because uh, it would be like he's wearing a human skin as a, as a mask. So it's like the, the, you know, the mouth is like hanging like this. The eyelids are hanging because he's wearing the skin over his face. And in this version, which is a sure you can see it even better. It's... Um, uh, he's wearing the skin tied from behind. So these are the, the, the pieces of skin that are pulled to make the, the, his bodysuit, and then the skin pulled across to make, make his skin mask. So the story of Chipe is, um, is that, so this story is not for many pre-Hispanic codices. So like I have never actually heard or read a story, like a sick narrative or a, or a myth that comes from a pre-Hispanic book or a post a conquest book that describes who he is. But today there is a story that is believed by many um, danzantes and this, in this version of the story in particular, I heard from a, um, a, a man who had heard it from his grandmother in Xochimilco where his grandmother still speaks Nahuatl and this is a story that had been handed down through them. So the story is part of a living tradition rather than something that is written in a book. But at any rate, in this version of the story, uh, Chipitotec, well, so in the year one rabbit, uh, in, you know, very, very long ago, there was a terrible famine and the people were dying of starvation and weeping and, and, and crying in their hunger. And Chipe heard them from his place sleeping beneath the earth. He heard their weeping. So he caused a great white sapote tree to grow and he climbed up the branches of the tree. And when he reached the top, he took a knife, a thick bat knife, and he cut off his own skin. And he held it out and let it fall to the earth below. And where it fell, the earth became covered with green uh, maize, and the corn grew, and the people were able to assuage their hunger. And his body fell in part in pieces because he had no skin to hold it together. So his arms fell, his legs fell, his head fell. Everything fell to the earth below, and they formed the mountains and hills that now surround the Valley of Mexico. So this is the story of Chipitotec, which is, uh, describes him as a um, as like a corn deity who heard our suffering when we were in great hunger, cut off his own skin, and through his sacrifice allowed our ancestors to keep on living. So in this version of the painting, which is one that I did, you can see him holding the Tecpat blade, which he had used to peel off his own skin. He, as you can see, he has um, two sets of hands and uh, uh, and then he's wearing the skin. So the skin is yellow. In, in prayer, in, uh, in Nahuatl, pre-Hispanic prayers, he's described as the bearer of the golden skin because this flayed skin becomes yellow. Uh, and his, his uh, living skin color is underneath. So 
Uh, this is not an, a pre-Hispanic convention. The way I paint Chipototec is I give both of his hands life so that the top hand that's hanging on the top is also holding on to his rattle, his rain rattle. And on the other side, he's holding his, uh, his tekpat knife with which he sacrificed himself. So the metaphor of Chipe is complicated. So he's the god of the changing of the seasons. So one of the ideas of Chipe is that um, in the, so there's only really two seasons in Mexico. There's the rainy season in the summer and the dry season in the winter. You can get a little cold in the winter, but not that cold. And it's, it's really just the differences between rain and no rain. So during the dry season, which lasts about six months, uh, everything becomes dry and barren and the, the corn dies and everything is dead. And in the summer, it starts to rain and everything becomes green. This is the season when Quetzalcoatl descends to the earth and covers the earth with his green plumage. It makes everything verdant and green. Um, so the idea is, is that Chipe is the earth. So Chipe is a god, a Teotl, who's wearing this dead skin. And underneath, he's alive. So in the, in the winter, uh, in the Mexican winter, the dry season, when the earth is dead and all of the vegetation is yellow and golden because it's dry, um, it would be like Chipe, the live god wearing this dead skin above it, the, the skin of death, but he's not really dead. It's just concealing the truth, which is underneath, which is that life is waiting to be reborn. So every year, Chipe removes his skin and reveals the truth, which is underneath, which is the truth of life and the corn waiting to be reborn. So that's one metaphor of Chipe is this life and death held in the body of the same person um, awaiting rebirth. Oh, and then as far as the mask goes, you can see it here. His mouth is, is dangling open. It's just this wide black vacant space. And his eyes are dangling because he, there's no like, those are, those are the eyelids of a skin mask that he's wearing over his living face. So um, another uh, metaphor of Chipe is that Chipe is a god of corn. So when you get the corn, uh, it comes with its cob, and you uh, you have to break off the stem and peel off the husk. So the breaking of the stem is like cutting off a person's head. And the peeling of the husk is like the peeling of the skin of Chipe. So an important idea in the Mexicayo and Mesoamerican religions is that, is that the gods, the Teteo, are not distinct from the thing they represent. So for example... Uh, Chipe is one of the gods of corn. So when you eat an ear of corn, you're not eating, he doesn't rule the corn. He isn't like the god of the corn. He is the corn. So when you break off the stem and you peel off the skin, you're flaying a living god. And to eat the corn, you have the god has to sacrifice himself so that you can take him into your body and be able to live. So all of the Teteo do this. Uh, they, they sacrifice themselves in order to give life and existence to the world that we inhabit. So Chipe is doing this for us. They, he sacrifices himself for us so that we can live. So the, so the imagery here has to do with, with that. So he's a god of vegetation because uh, of this way that the skin he's wearing is the, the corn. So the... Oh, it, it disconnected for us. So the images that I have here of Chipe, well, so clearly his most important symbol is the flayed skin that he wears. Um, so like here, you can see the dangling hands of Chipe. But his other symbols include a uh, paper mashlatl or loincloth, which is shaped like a swallowtail, which is usually in red and white stripes. So these are this is his, um, he's the only teteo, the, the only te Teotl who wears this kind of loincloth. He also um, has this red stripe through his, uh, through his eye, which is one of his symbols. So in my painting, he appears that way as well. He has the red stripes running through his eye. The mistake I made in this painting, I made this painting about six years ago. And at the time, in many of the codices, he appears, so you can see it here. He appears with this little skirt right there which is of, um, which I never, I couldn't understand what they were. I was always confused about it. And I s interpreted them as Quetzal feathers. So like this is a, this is a crown of Quetzal feathers, which symbolize the new vegetation and uh, wisdom and life and all of these like positive metaphors. And this 
skirt, which he's the only guy who wears a skirt like that. Sometimes um, Miklán Tecutli does too, although his is made out of grass. But like, I thought it was made out of Quetzal feathers. So when I painted my version of him, I gave him a Quetzal feather skirt. And I found out later, much later, about a year ago, that it's actually made out of white sapote leaves, the white sapote tree that he had climbed to throw his skin onto the earth below. And in um, pre-Hispanic ceremonies, there are descriptions of, the, of, of altars built to him where they would use white sapote tree um, branches and make a bower, and they would put him sitting underneath it on a white sapote wood bench. So I just wanted to point that out as a sign that if you're an artist or a poet or something like that and you want to work with imagery that has to do with pre-Hispanic, with our heritage and the pre-Hispanic world, you can never know enough. You it, like Mistakes will always happen. It's such a rich, dense world that I'm, I do that to myself regularly. That I'll make something and years later I'll realize that I made a mistake. So here I gave it, I made it shiny and, and uh, made the, I gave me the quetzal feathers when in fact they should have been white sapote leaves. And from now on, that's how I will paint them. I haven't had a chance to paint him since I learned this fact, but that's what I will do in the future. Um, but I just wanted to point out that these kinds of mistakes are something that are inevitable <laughs> when we are dealing with our, our heritage that is as rich as ours and we don't have the kind of teachers that I wish we did. Um, so anyways, so in my painting, uh, he's carrying his mist rattle. So uh, a common part of pre-Hispanic ritual, which is something that Michael Puli still does, is something called techipla. So um, an image of a god, of a teteo, is called a techipla. Uh, the image could be made out of anything. It could be made out of dough, amaranth seeds. It could be made out of wood, stone, painting, or it can be a living human. So, if, so one of the ideas in pre-Hispanic thought is and one of the most important ideas is about the mask. So in Western thought, for us today, we think that masks, we think of a mask as being like carnival or Halloween. It's like you put on a mask and you can kind of go crazy, do whatever you want. It's like nobody knows who you are, you're hidden, and you can like have a ball, like, you know, go, go crazy. The pre-Hispanic idea of the mask is the exact opposite. In the pre-Hispanic world, this is a mask. Like my face is a mask. Everything that exists is a mask. And it's it's the mask that conceals the truth of a Mateo. The gods, the Teteo, exist within me, and they exist within all of us. So if I put on a mask, and by mask I also mean the regalia, the, the face and body paint, the feathers, like the whole entire uh, regalia that represents a given Teotl, um, I'm not hiding anything. I'm revealing another truth that existed in me, within me. The regalia of Chipetotec, you become Chipetotec, and you are Chipetotec on earth, that the chipla of chipotec uh, in ceremony. So in pre-Hispanic ceremony, that the chipla of chipotec would carry the mist rattle. So the the rattle they would uh, pound it on the ground as they walked, and it would have this like light uh, rattling sound, which is thought to sound like his thick butt blade, and he's carrying a red mirror. So the gods all blur into one another. They don't exist as individuals in the way that you and I think we do. Um, the, 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 everything that exists is a manifestation of Ometeo. Ometeo is the one and only truth uh, that's at the bottom and fundament of all existence. So the, the, the gods, the Teteo, are the whims of fate. Uh, he is one of the most important and he, uh, he, he's the, the principle of chaos, which is necessary for rebirth and order to come into existence. However, Tezcatlipoca, because he is a manifestation of Ometeo and does not exist as a complete and independent entity, has his, another avatar, which is the red Tezcatlipoca. The red Tezcatlipoca is the creative avatar of the god of destruction. So Chipetotec is an avatar of the red Tezcatlipoca. So you go from Chipetotec to the red Tezcatlipoca to the black Tezcatlipoca, and it takes you on this full journey from chaos and destruction to birth and creation. However, Chipetotec carries within himself life and death, creation and destruction. Uh, he is 
you know, the summer and the winter, uh, the field that's dry and the field that's dead. So he contains all of this within him. He is the point at, so like St. Teotl, the god of corn as such, is the corn itself and all of these good things that the corn brings to you. But Chipototec reminds you that in order to eat the corn, the corn has to sacrifice himself and die. And he reminds you that every year the cornfield is going to die and then it will be reborn. And he reminds you that we, like the cornfield, are going to die and be reborn. Not as individuals, but as, as a species, as, as humans. It's like, I'm going to die, but if I had kids, my children would continue to live. It's like, we will continue to survive as humanity. As like, I am like an ear of corn, and another ear of corn will come after me. And he is reminding us of this. So the knife, the red mirror, which is a symbol of the red Tzcatlipoca, uh, is what he carries. And then he's dancing on the head of Siwakuatl, serpent woman, who is the goddess of the earth. So he is, is um, uh, putting his, his, um, his heel into the earth and spinning. And the process of dancing and the, the spin that he's doing is kind of like when you um, have a, a, a fire drill and you do this to the fire sticks, it causes a spark and, and a, a fire to begin. So that's exactly what he's doing through dance. And he's uh, spinning his heel and causing the divine spark of life to burst on the hair of Siwakuatl, serpent woman, the goddess of the earth. And from her hair grow, grows the corn and the crops that we are going to eat. So you can see there's pumpkins, tomatoes, chili, squash, and most importantly, corn. The corn has human heads uh, is to show you that the corn themselves are spirits and they're alive. So, however, Siwakuatl uh, is eating three humans uh, because Siwakuatl provides us with the corn that we're going to eat, but she also uh, is the tomb who's going to take us in the end. All of the Teteo bring us life and death, joy and suffering. Um, on either side, I painted a man and a woman. So I chose to paint them in sort of like these 1950s clothes because I wanted to represent, I wanted to show that they're like modern people, but I wanted them to be like our grandfathers. Like I wanted to bring it into the modern world, but still show this continuity that the tradition of Chipotec has never ended. So I didn't want them to be pre-Hispanic people. I wanted them to be modern people. And that's why they were standing on either side. So even though I painted this painting quite a few years ago, it's actually not finished. This space down here is going to have a prayer written on one side in Nahuatl, a, a pre-Hispanic prayer uh, praising Chipotec and asking us him to bring us the rain, the green fields, and the corn. And then on the other side is going to be the same prayer translated into, um, into Spanish. So, um, so basically that's it. I just wanted to share the story of Chipotec, uh, what he stands for. Um, and who he is, and, uh, and, and to share with you this part of our tradition, which I think is really profound and really beautiful. And um, I will be back in a week, if not sooner. And um, thank you very much for, uh, for watching.